Hey guys, it's Hadi again from HM Studio and in this video I'll show you how to illuminate this gorgeous interior scene with Corona Renderer. You'll learn how to do that with the sun and sky, HDRI images and how to add some extra artificial lights to get a uniform looking light all over the scene. And also I'll teach you how to use multiple environment lights with the light mixer in order to extract many different moods out of only one render. But before we start, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell also. That's being said, let's move over to 3ds Max and start the project. Okay, for indoor lighting we have two different sorts of lights. The first one is natural illumination by capturing daylight using windows or skylights which basically is the main source of light during daytime. And the second one is by using artificial light sources such as lamps and light fixtures. There are so many ways that you can do indoor lighting, but in this video I'm gonna show you how I do it almost every time. For me always the first step is to use an override material so I could get a clear idea about how lights are reacting in the scene. It would be so difficult to tell if I have many different complex materials with different diffuse color, reflection, refraction and other stuff. So in order to do that, I need to enable override material under the scene tab and apply a simple corona material to that. Also, I need to exclude light, glass, and portal materials because obviously we want the environment light to get through the window. Okay, the next step is to add the portals. We need to cap the openings with the simple plane geometry. Just make sure to cover the whole space, so don't forget to use the snap tool for that. And just so you know, it doesn't matter if the normal of this plane is facing inside or outside, it'll work either way. Now I just need to apply a portal material to that. Portals are telling Corona how to sample light more efficiently, which helps to get rid of image noise much faster. So it's really necessary to use them. Okay, as the first method, we're going to use the sun and sky. First of all, let's go to the top view and start by adding the sun into the scene. Now move it up to here so we could get a nice afternoon sunlight. As for the environment, we need to add the corona sky. First make sure the sun is selected, then go to the modify panel and add corona sky to the environment slot by clicking over here. Okay, now let's start the interactive rendering to see what we got so far. As you can see the intensity is way too high, but the first thing you always want to do is to increase the highlight compress. Increasing this number reduces the burnout effect on the bright areas, but also reduces the contrast of the whole image. Which actually is not a big deal cause we can always add some extra contrast by using this option over here, or in the post production with photoshop or any other software that you're used to. Okay, I still feel the intensity is too high, therefore I'm going to reduce the intensity on both Corona Sky and Corona Sun. I'm going to use the same number for both of them. To modify the Corona Sky intensity, first I need to drag it into the material editor and choose the instance. Now let's double click on it in order to get access to its parameters and reduce the intensity by half. Now let's use the same number for Corona Sun as well. Okay, it already looks so much better. You should know that by moving the corona sun along the z-axis, you can match the way that light looks at different times of the day. So for example, if I want to have a sunset, I could simply move the corona sun all the way down close to the ground. Alright, these buildings are blocking the sunlight, so let's move the sun slightly to the side. Okay, this is fine. Now that we're here, there's something else I should tell you. As all of you know, the sun appears to be bigger when it's closer to the horizon line. To simulate that effect, we have this option over here. By increasing this number, the light source, which in this case is the sun, will get bigger. Therefore, we'll get softer shadows. I can't give you an exact number for that, cause it's kinda like your artistic touch, so feel free to test some different numbers and see which one is more suitable for your project. You can also use this option in the overcast weather when the sun shining through the clouds and shadows are soft. For this scene I don't want to have any sunlight in the room, instead I want that on these buildings 
across the street so I'm going to move it over here for now that's perfect okay that was all about the Corona Sun and Sky now let's start with the HDRI just make sure to make a copy of the Corona Sky into the material editor because we're going to use it again as one of our multiple environment lights when we start with the light mixer I've already done that when I was trying to reduce the intensity now we can remove it from the environment slot by right clicking over here and selecting clear alright now let's add the HDRI image into the material editor first you need to create a corona bitmap and load your HDRI image for this scene I'm going to use two HDRI images let's start with the cloudy weather and later on I'll create a dusk mode as well Now let's connect this bitmap to a Corona color correct node and then we can instance this node into the environment slot. The reason that we're using this color correct node is for us to be able to change the intensity, contrast and saturation of this HDRI image if that's necessary. Now let's start the interactive rendering to see the result. I think it's good as it is but you always need to rotate the HDRI image because you might find some more interesting moves. I always rotate the HDRI for a full circle by 90 degree steps and save out the result in the history panel so I could compare them to each other and decide which one is more interesting. Uh, in this case, I don't want to make any rotation, but I'll show you how to do that anyway. First, I start off with zero degree. I let it render for a decent amount of passes so I could see how is the balance between the lights and shadows. Okay, let's save this and try again with 90 degrees. I'm going to pause the video and repeat the process with 180 and 270 degrees as well. Alright, now we can compare these images together. With the left click you can set any of these images as A and with the right click you can set it as B. Let's start with the first two images. I'm going to set this one as A and the second one as B. Now with this slider over here, I can compare the two images. Let's say I like the second one better, so I'm going to set this one as A and the next one as B and so on. As I said before, I'm not going to change the rotation for this image, so let's change this number back to zero and we're done with this one. I'm gonna use another one with dusk mood, but this time I will speed up the video since everything will be the same for that image as well. Okay, now that we're done with the environment lighting, it's time to add some artificial lights such as halogens, a pendant lamp and this floor lamp over here. Let's start with the halogen lamps. First off, I need to create a disk light right below one of the halogen lamps that I have. In order to do that, I'm going to the top view first, create the light with 3 centimeters of width, then I'll move it up in the front view. Now let's make some copies of this light for all of the halogen lamps. Just make sure to make them instance.
Alright, now let's run the interactive rendering and modify the lights as it's rendering. I'm gonna turn off the environment light for now because I want to see the effect of the halogen lamps alone. Okay, first of all I have to disable all of these options because I don't want to see the light source in my renders. And also we don't want to get any reflections from them in the window. And as you can see the intensity of the lights is way too low, I'm going to increase the intensity until I get the desired effect. Twelve hundred seems to be a good number, but they're not still bright enough, and that's because I haven't used the directionality option yet. And they're casting the light like area light. I need to increase the directionality to get the spotlight effect. Okay, let me save this render so you could see the differences after I add some directionality to these lights. The light emission will get more concentrated as I'm increasing this number. For these spotlights, somewhere around uh, 0.4 is a good number. Alright, now let's compare the two images. As you can see, the image on the right is brighter, although I'm using the same intensity for both of these renders. As for the color, I always keep them white because I'm going to use the light mixer and it's easier for me to adjust the colors over there. There is another way to make this spotlight effect and that's by applying an IS profile to your lights. To do that, you just need to click here and choose one of the IS profiles that you have. There's a small pack which comes with the Corona renderer and I'm going to use one of these but first let's try some of them for you to see their differences. Okay, for this scene, I'm going with the white soft, which I think is nice. Okay, we're done with the halogen lamps. I'm going to illuminate the pendant lamp as well. For that also, I need a disc light, uh, like halogen lamps, but this time I'm going to use the directionality instead of IES. Now let's create the light source in the top view, and I'm going to move it up to here. This time, I'll turn off the halogen lamps so I could see the effect of the pendant lamp. I'm gonna increase the directionality to 0.4 and the intensity to somewhere around 250. Okay, it looks nice. I'm going to do the same thing for the floor lamp as well. Let's turn off the pendant lamp this time and create the light. I think it looks nice as it is, but if you want, you can use an IS profile for that. I'm going to leave it uh, this way. Now for the last step, let's add some lights below the cabinets. For that, I'm going to use a narrow rectangle light. Uh, now let's isolate the top cabinets and create the light in a top view.
I need two more copies of this light for the sides and I'm going to choose instance again. Now let's scale it down a bit and make another copy. I'd forgotten to move them up so let's do that first and I'm going to use 0.2 for directionality and I'll use 200 for the intensity. Now let's turn on all the lights together and see what we got. It seems I need to add some contrast to this image and the intensity looks a bit high. So let's reduce this number a bit. Now I just need to add all the lights into the light mixer and adjust the colors. In order to do that, first I need to add the light mix element to the render elements. And then I'm going to add one light select element for each group of lights. For example, I'm going to divide the halogen lights into two groups, one group for the living room and another one for the kitchen. So let's select all the halogen lights in the living room and add them to this element. I just have to click on this button over here and everything is done. And I'm going to do the same thing for the kitchen, pendant lamp, floor lamp and all the other lights as well. Okay, you remember that we made three different lights as the environment light and in order to use all three of them, we need to go to the environment rollout under the scene tab and choose the multiple maps. Now from here, we can add as many environment slots as we want, which in this case, we have three of them. So let's add three slots and use each of our environment lights in one of these slots. Okay, now I'm going to add three light select elements and use each of them for one of these environment light. The first one was the Corona Sky, which is this one. The second one was the Cloudy Weather. And the last one was the Dusk Mode.
Alright, everything is ready now, I just need to disable the override material, unhide everything and start the rendering. I'm going to render two or three shots and we'll modify them together when they're finished. Ok guys, rendering has finished and these are the final results with default settings. Unfortunately, 3ds Max did crash during the rendering and I had to recreate the light mix again and I'd forgotten to rename some of these elements. Therefore, names are different in here. Just so you know, this one is the Corona Sky, this one is the Cloudy One and this one is the Dusk Moon. So, as the first step, I'm going to turn off all the lights by clicking on the toggle lull button over here and turn them on one by one. First of all, let's start with the environment, which is the Corona Sky. As you can see, the exposure is way too high, so I'm going to increase the highlight compress up to 3. Okay, it looks so much better and we got rid of the burnout effect, but this image looks washed out now. So let's add some contrast by increasing this number up to 3 as well. There's also a bluish tint which is fixable by increasing the white balance up to 7500. This option sets the white balance of the image using the Kelvin temperature. The image will get a warmer look as you're increasing this number and it gets cooler as you're decreasing it. Ok, now let's increase the filmic shadows for a bit also, something like 0.4. This option gives a bit of saturation and richness to the shadows. Ok, I'm going to turn on the halogen lamps now. Let's decrease the intensity cause it's a little bit strong. Ok, it looks nice. You can also change the color in your scene if that's necessary, but for this scene I'm gonna stick with the white color. I guess we can add some more contrast, but this time let's use the curves adjustment. I'm gonna add some contrast uh, to the shadows, which is this part of the curve, and since I don't need any contrast in the highlights, I'm gonna add another point to this side of the curve and slightly move it up. Alright, because of that extra contrast, some areas of the image looks burned out again. So let's increase the highlight compress a little bit more. Ok, it looks much better, but I'm going to add a LUT to this image also. LUT, which stands for lookup table, is a file that transforms one range of colors in an image to another range of colors, simply by manipulating the hue, saturation, and the brightness of the image. These LUTs that you can see here are coming with the Corona renderer, and I'm gonna try some of them for you to see their effect. You can also change the opacity if you think the effect is stronger than what you want. Uh, I'm going to use this one, which I think is suitable for this image. Ok, since I'm finished with this image, I could save these adjustments as presets, so I could use them on my other renders. You can save the post-tab adjustments from here. Ok, let's give it a name and save the preset. And you can do that for the light mix adjustments from here. First of all, I'm going to reset all the adjustments that we made to their default values. You don't have to do that, I'm only doing this because of the purpose of this tutorial. Alright. Now let's start everything from the scratch. Once again, we're going to start with the environment light. Let's increase the intensity and obviously we need to increase the highlight compress as well. I guess it could use some more blue color, so let's adjust its color by these sliders over here. It definitely looks better this way, but let's increase the intensity a bit more. Now we're going to start with the smaller light sources first and make our way through to the big ones. I'm gonna start with this floor lamp. Ok, the intensity is good enough, I'm just going to make it a bit warmer. Something like this. 
Now let's turn on the pendant lamp. I'm going to make it a bit warmer and I'll increase the intensity to something like 3. Now to get rid of this burned out effect, I'm going to increase the highlight compress to somewhere around 6. Ok, now let's do the same steps for the other lights as well. I'm gonna decrease the overall exposure because it looks brighter than what I want it to be. Okay, it looks better. Now let's add some contrast as we did before. A combination of contrast and curves adjustment. Now let's try some of these LUTs to see which one is working better with this mode. This one is fine but with less opacity. Because of that lot, we have more exposure, so let's decrease it a little bit more and maybe we could increase the environment exposure. Actually it was better before, so let's keep it that way. Just don't forget to turn on the rest element. All the unassigned lights are going to be in this element and everything with corona light material but without emitting enabled like this floor lamp over here will be here as well. Okay, we're done with this mood also, so let's uh, save the adjustments as presets and use them on another render. Now let's say I want to use those presets on this render. All I have to do is to load the files. Light mix and post. Done. Of course you need to modify some parameters based on each image, but it's so much faster and easier this way, right? Now let's try them on this render. Alright, it looks pretty good. I just want to take a moment and mention if you're still watching this tutorial, that means you found it helpful. So make sure to give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel also. Okay, now I'm going to do some post-production on these images with Photoshop, uh, but I'm not going to include that part in this video because it's gonna take much longer and you might get bored. But let me know in the comments if you want me to make another tutorial about my post-production workflow as well. Okay guys, thank you for joining me today and if you have any questions about this tutorial, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. See you next time.